Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding a dynamic with someone who you might have found to become difficult in your life, um, sort of inhibiting of your happiness, hindering of your ability to communicate. You feel that this is becoming an issue and especially if you're close with this person, either in a workplace or in a family where, you know, you see them on a, on the daily, this might become, this might be a very important, you know, video for you. <clears throat> when we talk about people who are malignant, narcissist, psychopathic, difficult, toxic, manipulation, manipulative, or controlling, one important aspect we really need to understand about someone who is malignant narcissist or psychopath or someone, you know, really who is causing you distress, dismay, confusion, fear, obligation, guilt, sort of apathy. I mean, all this is not normal. Um, you know, these, it is, it's not as a fault of your own. It doesn't mean you have a character flaw, a character weakness. When you are in a relationship with someone who is oppressive, someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic, in the malignant sense can be very oppressive, meaning very subduing of others, the voice of others, sort of muffling of their cries, muffling of their viewpoint, <clears throat> muffling of their stance, sort of not allowing you to have the airspace, as I talk about that here on the channel. And namely that of unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint, especially, um, Let's see here. Uh, sorry, uh, one moment. <clears throat> because it's unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint on others. Unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint on others. Unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint. So if we break that down, it's immoral, it's unfair, and it's not right. So what you're experiencing is from this, there's a lack of, you know, there's an injustice, you know, you feel hurt, wronged, um, belittled, violated. These are the violation energies that we see when people's boundaries and standards have been crossed. And then when it, when it hurts enough, then action will be taken. Your healing will begin to catapult and you'll be able to take action in the direction of your truth, your dreams, your liberation, and your strength. When you understand the oppressive forces that have been agitating or affecting your life. Oppression is really when somebody is, is you know, pushed down. There, it's, you know, some people talk about an oppressive heat, you know. In other words, I can barely move. I, I don't feel comfortable. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm stalted or I have a fatigue of energy. I can't resist it, you know. And then so feeling like they want to give up. They're just going to you know, surrender and, and not go for the victory. Um, so oppression, unjustly inflicting hardship and constraint on others. So making things worse. We talked, we spoke about that before, the pejorative nature of the psychopath. And a viewer was uh, so cute, they said, you know, that's was kind of like a kindergarten lesson. But, you know, we I really want you to understand the word pejorative, which means making matters worse, inciting you know, inciting um, animosity, um, harshness, hostility, just sort of that divisiveness. And it can catch people, I think, by surprise, especially if you've been love bombed by one of these people um, who are, you know, um, who you have found yourself where they're basically not allowing you um, the opportunity to exercise your voice, your viewpoint. You know, you don't have the opportunity. Um, and so little, little by little, this is, I think with a lot of, especially the covert narcissist, that the, the personal power, it's a very gradual um, erosion of power over time. So that's why it's so important that you understand the I am. It, just very simple. I am. When you do that, you're in the I am. You're in the physical I. You're in the spiritual I. You're in the emotional I. 
body, mind, and spirit become aligned. It's, you know, it can happen a second, but oftentimes you need to really focus on this I am and allow all this to come into alignment, not only within your body, but within the emotional body as well. You know, your emotional body is really your feelings. It's your energy and motion. <clears throat> so your emotions might have been, you know, oppressed, pushed down. You know, so you, you have to realize, you know, like, um, you know, back in the, the 60s, the Rolling Stones, you know, he talked about under my thumb. And he talks about, a, you know, a woman who, he, you know, who's now under his control. That is oppressiveness. You know, it can become, relationships can become very oppressive in the workplace, in the community, um, in your family, in your um, intimate relationships, within your sibling dynamics. This is something that needs to be looked at and understood. Um and it's unfair and it's meant to keep, you know, gr you ground down so that you don't have, you, you just feel a, a sense of helplessness. You know, you haven't been able to connect enough dots. So that, that hel helplessness is oftentimes a learned helplessness. You have been taught to be helpless. You have been trained and programmed to be helpless either by whatever the people, maybe, you know, then you've internalized this and then revalidated that you're helpless. So you kind of have this negative self-talk going along. You need to correct your self-talk. You know, I am in a position of truth. You know, I am, I am, I am. If you do that, then if you just speak it clearly, then your emotions will begin to sort of clarify um, your emotions will begin to become a little bit stronger and less chaotic. <clears throat> you know, if you have so many just different negative emotions from apathy to hurt feelings, to being violated and feeling angry, to feeling guilty, it's difficult to sort these all out. So oftentimes then things get muddled. Things aren't clear. You know, you need to really, what I always talk about is scheduling an emotment. A, a basically a time where you tap into a more positive emotion with yourself and you deliberately schedule it in. So for example, if you have a hard time, you know, learning, then you might need to have an appointment, um, an emotment, your emotions, an appointment to work with your emotions. It's kind of like a combo word. Um, but then you can make sure that you schedule these in. If you look at your, you know, overall, your, your overall day, your overall calendar, your overall week, your overall month. What are your emotional deficits right now? Where are you bottoming out? What are you really lacking? If you can write one through 10 or one through 20, what am I, what I am lacking in my calendar right now is, and if you write one through 20 and just fill it in and just no matter how silly it is, you know, time to sleep, time to jump, time to dance, time to pray, time to meditate, time to travel. What, what is it that you're lacking right now? Don't censor it. Love, whatever it is, sex, kisses, hugs, eye contact, music, fun, whatever it is. You know, just put it all out there. And realize, put it all out there. Come on now. Let's go. 1 through 20. Write it down. If you have to pause the video, do that. But then, you know, come back and then once you write it all out, I want you to look, this is you talking on the page. I'm a big advocate of writing. A lot of people, oh, well, I can just, you know, think it. Okay. Well, you know, if you want quicker results, then I recommend that we write this down <laughs> so you can have, you know, kind of jog your system along a little bit. Um, but this is you talking. Why owe you, your heart, your gut, your soul. This is the real deal. This is the raw. This is the good stuff. What are you lacking? Well, that, you know, it's a chance to, for you to, when you do this, you can cut through the sensor and you can say, wow, oh my God, I have not done this, 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 this. And I didn't know that this was bugging me and I haven't done this. Start plugging this into your appointment book. I hope you all have a calendar. We're already into June of 2020 right now. So whenever you're watching this video, I hope you begin to use the tools of a moment and begin to schedule these in. The recovery date is also a similar function, but we're not going to go into that tool right now. The amount will help you to feel a little bit, not only more in control of your emotions, 
but in control of your destiny, in control of your feelings, in control of your behavior, in control of your vision moving forward. If you don't have a vision for your life moving forward, then you're then anything is going to basically create a, a direction for you. You need to stand for something or fall for anything, John Cougar Mellencamp, you know? So you need to find and find what you stand for, you know? And you might find that all the, you know, sort of mindset states that were, you know, um, sort of tried to be cultivated in you when you were in a relationship with someone who is oppressive, you might have then had a defense mechanism to put on a happy face, to always be funny, to always be the one working, to always be the one with the gifts, to always, and do you see how you might have done things to counteract this feeling of being subdued, this heaviness, and, you know, try to take it on in a, an ineffectual way for yourself. So in other words, a way that burned you out. Um, so you no longer need to be that person who the narcissist, quote unquote, was trying to get you to be. You need to be who you are to be. Um, I remember um, back when I was um, in a summer uh, break from college and one of my good friends had a, um, he was a camp counselor at a, uh, at a, uh, a day camp for, for, a kid, for children. And, you know, it's like, I remember, you know, he had to keep the you know, excitement level at this all time high for all day, you know, um, and he was a very talented musician, um, very, you know, tall guy, real gentle giant. Um, but, you know, he said, you know, it's very difficult because I can't, you know, keep that degree of excitement going all day, you know, it's, it's not normal. So you might have felt a similar experience with this narcissist. Like I cannot keep this level of lifestyle going on. I cannot keep it. I cannot keep going like we have been, you know, and if that's the case, be willing to hear what you're saying. Don't muffle that. Don't shriek away. Don't think that the fun is over. It's going to get bad from here. It's going to get better. But the, the, as soon as you can begin to admit that, you will, you will stop um, feeling so tense and you'll be able to, you know, uh, live a little bit of a lighter existence and not feel so oppressed or sort of bullied or, you know, had your, um, had, you know, a, a, a cloud come over your sun where you just sort of feel eclipsed. I think it's kind of a feeling people feel eclipsed. They don't, they don't feel like you, they see, you know, the whole them. So it's kind of like you only see part of me and, you know, you have to embrace this existence and learn the art of self-responsibility, you know, and being responsible and accountable to yourself. And this is sort of a reordering oftentimes of priority for people who have been in a codependent status. So make sure you look at that for yourself. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out, peace in, peace be with you, and have a beautiful day.